uh, really happy to see so many people attend today. Uh, we, are, we have only one talk today, not the usual two talks, and our talk is on very cloud native uh, talk. It's about deploying containers on bare metal. And we have Sampat Santana, who is a computer science engineer from Carnegie Mellon, and he is a product manager at Ericsson, and his specialty is in cloud technologies. So please welcome Sampat. Thank you, uh, Sarshan. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so today's talk is about uh, containers on bare metal. It's just a uh, overview, like what all the technologies, where the technology direction is going, and uh, comparing between uh, virtual machines. Like generally, when we say containers, it's deployed on virtual machines. So we will get a chance to compare what is the difference between deploying in virtual machines and uh, on bare metal. What are the different uh, use cases? Why we should go for bare metal deployment? And uh, what are certain challenges in the deploying in bare metal? And also we will talk about uh, some of the latest uh, technologies uh, that will enable uh, bare metal deployments, uh, more secured uh, and other aspects. <coughs> okay. Uh, myself, uh, Sampat Santana. I work for Ericsson. Ericsson is a uh, leading uh, uh, telco provider uh, with uh, all the world's uh, leading telco operators like AT, TT Mobile and Verizon. And, uh, so right now the kind of technologies which, okay, Sudarshan has said like we should not have any marketing. <laughs> it's not what I'm just trying to introduce. So why cloud native is important for us. So so we are building 5G technologies in uh, Ericsson. Uh, so 5G is uh, coming. So 5G is built ground up compared to 2G or 4G. Uh, it's built ground up on all 5G components of microservices. So if you don't have microservices, then you don't have 5G. It's 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 built ground up for micro cloud native microservices. Um, so that that's why I like, uh, just want to briefly introduce. Uh, so in Ericsson, what uh, we are doing is uh, uh, my team. Uh, we build a product called Ericsson Cloud Container Distribution. It's a CNCF certified uh, uh, Kubernetes distribution. Uh, we take uh, Kubernetes and all the CNCF components, uh, package it together for telco applications and do some telco hardening. Uh, there are certain use cases from telco, uh, which is not available in general in Kubernetes, like say IPv6 and uh, multiple interfaces. Uh, those are the things which IT world doesn't really uh, care about, but the telco applications really uh, need that. So. What we do is our product, like we take uh, Kubernetes and then build up all the uh, uh, round of components for the telco use cases and harden it. And then there are a lot of uh, regulatory requirements which we go through. And then we have a common distribution for all the telco applications. Uh, so this is a product which uh, our team work for. And uh, why this topic makes sense, the most relevant to us is like in telco, uh, we, we deploy all the workloads in bare metal. Uh, that's the, that's the use case like for 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 the latency reasons where you have uh, when five G is coming when you have a lot of devices in the edge we wanted to have that uh, uh, performance parameter so that's the reason like we have to deploy Kubernetes in the bare metal that too on the edge that's one use case so then also we have certain things like on the uh, vir virtual machines we need to deploy also in the virtual machines before we go to the five G phase. Uh, so because in the telco world, like there are a lot of investments made, made already on the open stack. So we need to have uh, ability to deploy Kubernetes in the open stack environment and also in future in the bare metal environment. So that's the relevance of this uh, topic and the background. First we will uh, go through some of the deployment options for the containers. So containers can be uh, deployed in uh, different uh, infrastructures. Uh, as we know, all know, like uh, in the public cloud providers, we have like almost uh, every cloud provider has the Kubernetes engine on field and that. So Google, Google G GKE uh, is the Google's Kubernetes engine. So there are like uh, different aspects. Uh, so GKE uh, is like uh, very much validated because Kubernetes comes from Google and also 
uh, they have an um, a on-prem op option. So if you choose for GKE on-prem, then you will have a single pane of glass where you can view or manage things together. Uh, in certain cases like uh, GKE's advantage that you, the video charge for the control plane uh, of Kubernetes. And then Azure AKS, um, that's also uh, um, available. And then uh, they also have uh, uh, pros and cons. And then you have AWS EKS. AWS EKS is like you need to have KOps to um, deploy that. So these are the uh, general um, how you deploy the public cloud, right? So then we go to uh, on-prem or third-party data centers. Uh, so then you have an uh, option of uh, deploying it to virtual machine. Uh, so that's the use case which I, I was talking about. Uh, when you say virtual machine, so you have already existing infrastructures, uh, say uh, open stack infrastructure. Uh, so you need to have uh, ability to deploy your containers on virtual machine, which is like a straightforward, straightforward uh, approach which everyone does. And then in, in the on-prem data center itself, like you have the uh, virtualized uh, environment, and also you have the bare metal things. So you, you could have certain workloads where uh, you need uh, performance benefits, then you deploy it on the environment. So these are the different uh, uh, deployment options we have. Yeah. Do, do you come across where, because on-prem you have to, you can have finite amount of resources, you can have bursting for peak loads to the cloud environment. Yeah, so there are like requirements, uh, which is like a hybrid environment. So that, that's a GKE on-prem kind of, right? You can still have a single pen of class where you have your uh, on-prem data center, and then you can burst off to the to the cloud. So that's the, always the case that, that needed to consider. Uh, even in case of uh, my background, like in the telco, they, they want to have that uh, ability. Even, even though you use the bare metal, you still have to have the ability to and how certain certain workloads move to the public cloud, non-sensitive data and other things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, continuing on that topic, like uh, containers on different uh, infrastructure. Uh, what uh, the slides shows is like the we have the uh, containers with uh, uh, sorry the VMs, the VMs with the uh, uh, apps on that, and then you have the underlying uh, layer, which is a beam. So you have a lot of uh, um, VMs there, and then you have hardware, basic hardware. So the, in this case, you can both your uh, coexistence of uh, IAS, which is like a beam, VMware kind of stuff, and then you have a CAS layer, which Kubernetes breaks into you. So your app can be uh, running on a, um, either it can run on top of a CAS, or it can run on top of a virtualized environment. The containers can run on both the scenarios. So there is no like uh, immediate migration. The migration path might be, you should have both support, like being able to run on a virtualized environment and also uh, enable uh, containers in the uh, bare metal scenario also. This is just to uh, show the coexistence So next, uh, we talk about uh, bare metal uh, benefits. So there are a lot of advantages when you go for bare metal. We will see why uh, the, what are the use cases we go for bare metal. But the advantages wise, like uh, uh, security, we talk about the differences like security, uh, performance, and the resource optimization, and operational benefits. Uh, so the left side picture shows you like when you have a, a Kubernetes on top of a virtualized layer, and then the right side shows like when you have Kubernetes on top of a hardware. So what we eliminate is that uh, virtualization layer, like a be, be it uh, OpenStack or VM, VMware. And uh, so we talk about a different aspect. Uh, when it comes to security, uh, in case of uh, VMs, you can run uh, certain of uh, workloads in the VM. Uh, it, that's more kind of secure. You you don't need to have a, when you want to have a multi tenancy. You have certain workloads bounded to the VM boundary, so it, it will not go and impact the other other VMs. So there is a, a security advantage when you run the containers on the 
uh, VMs. Right? When you what is the uh, when you run it on the bare metal, you you may not get that advantage of uh, boundary of uh, VM. So your containers like multiple containers from different tenants should be running sharing the same kernel running in the same hardware. <coughs> So that's the uh, difference in the security between um, uh, virtualized environment and the hardware, direct bare metal hardware. And then we talk about uh, performance. So performance benefits are there in, in the bare metal because you eliminate that uh, hypervisor layer. All your containers will directly run in the hardware. So when you uh, talk about throughput and the I.O., you don't need to go through multiple layers. You just skip that, and then your um, containers directly talk to the kernel down. So the performance benefits are much more in the uh, uh, bare metal uh, scenario. So one point I missed in the security aspect. In the security, um, VMs also has a, when you have any, any uh, vulnerability or security attack, uh, in case of VMs, there is a benefit that you might get attacked that only you need to, uh, that particular VM gets attacked and then you can quickly spin up other VMs. It may not impact the, uh, the workloads which you are running in other VMs. But in terms of uh, security attacks in uh, containers, uh, you, you need to take care that it, will, it might impact the other workloads sharing the same kernel. So there are those kind of uh, differences in the security aspect. Uh, next, we talk about uh, resource optimization. So there are, uh, there are, in terms of resource optimization also, we have some uh, pros and cons or differences between these two scenarios. Uh, resource optimization for bare metal, if you if you take, uh, you can run a lot of containers, right? Like you are you are, you don't have that entire layer of uh, hypervisor, which means you you have a lot of uh, resource resource available for you to run multiple containers there. But in terms of uh, uh, same hardware, if you want to compare, you put a virtualization machine and then a virtualization layer, and then you put uh, containers on top of it, where you might be able to run a little bit less number of containers. So there is a resource optimization uh, difference also. And then uh, we go to operational aspects. So the operational aspects, uh, the virtualized environment, you can quickly uh, bring up the VM when you want to scale, so you are, you can bring up one more VM or multiple VMs if you want. There are like tools available and then you can do that uh, quickly. Sorry, I need to log in again. So any, uh, any questions so far in this uh, one? Yeah. I'm a little confused, so you're saying that <coughs> Now I'm on a VM versus running on a container environment. The security part is the container still runs on zone boundary, right? That's, yeah. that's isolation. But you said that with VM, it's more isolation. Yes. I'm a little confused. So yeah, yeah. isolation is where the container is true. No, the, the, the level of isolation is different. So the container itself has a uh, security aspects, right? And then if you want to have uh, extra security bounded by VM, so if there is any attack happens to that uh, host machine, so your, all the containers will get attacked. So if, if attack happens in a virtualized environment, right, only that particular VM will get attacked. So you have the other VMs which are still running. Yeah. On the left hand side, you show OpenStack or Public Cloud. But the Public Cloud providers like Amazon or Oracle also provide bare metal for VMs. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was intended to show virtualized environment. I agree. There, there is a but that in general, right, that's not used heavily. So they use, when you say public cloud, it, it, it some, somehow resonates to VMs. So yeah, I agree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now the curve is like, they, they have started providing a lot of bare metal services also. Yeah, I agree. And also they, uh, there is a, in terms of when, when it comes to machine learning and others, they also provide GPUs, which is, uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. So, so the security front, what you're saying is running on virtualized layer is more secure. Is that what you're saying here then? No, there are pros and cons in the security also. It depends upon which use case you want to run. So if, if you are very sure like you don't have multi-tenancy kind of requirement, so then it's better you run it on a bare metal itself. But you have a multi-tenancy kind of requirement, you you, you take your multi-tenancy to the next level by running it in different uh, VMs. 
right? And also the security attack perspective, uh, the bare metal has certain other uh, uh, limitations also, because uh, in secure, so in a bare metal, you have different containers, and then you have to like different workloads are sharing the same uh, kernel. So you in same OS, you need to install a lot of packages which is not needed for your kind of workload. So that you are like uh, increasing the uh, your landscape of uh, security attack in terms of uh, uh, bare metal. But in in uh, in VMs, you are just restraining that into particular uh, VM. Yeah. So these are like it's yeah. So I was just wondering how is performance better on bare metal with all the additional software that is getting installed? No, the there is the additional software. What I tell, uh, meant to say is the the the, the uh, software as packages which you any of needed, right? Even those are needed in the VM. Okay. But in VM. Uh, for a particular kind of workload or a particular tenant or anything, so you have the packages inside that particular VM, right? So those packages are anyway needed in the VM and uh, bare metal, but there are packages which is like on the other VM will not impact you, you your workload. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was just confused because like uh, Yeah, there is no separate virtual environment in uh, in uh, bare metal. Oh, yeah. oh, but I think that's what you were saying. If there's multiple tenancy, it's better to go with that. Yeah. So, so we need to say like whether you are a hard hard multiple tenancy, right? Like if you if you want to have that, then it's better to go into a VM and to secure yourself. Uh, but if you say like you have a single tenancy uh, or a, a multi-tenancy in terms like you have different apps but all these apps all belongs to the same organization, those kind of things, then you can go to the bay metal and take advantage of it. Advantage of it yeah. Thanks. Okay, so the next is uh, operational aspects, right? So in operational aspects, there are multiple differences. So we, we cannot clearly say uh, VM is better or um, a bare metal is different, so it's all depends upon use cases. So in our operational aspects, uh, in terms of VM, uh, as we briefly touched, you can quickly spin up uh, VMs when you want to scale scale out, right? So and then you have a lot of automation tools, APIs available, and then uh, when you want to um, have a security patch, you or you want to maintain, you can bring down the VM and spin up on the VM. Like there are a lot of options. But if the, the same thing on the bare metal. Uh, you need to take you need to take care of the lifecycle management, like how you install the OS, and uh, there is no live update or something, right? You cannot have a spare bare metal to do a live update here. So how you install a vulnerability patch, and how you upgrade the OS, uh, how you uh, uh, maintain that, manage that. So there are like lifecycle management uh, things, which is which is not really. Uh, which is really easy in terms of uh, VM, uh, but in, in, in uh, uh, real hardware, you need to take care of it. So like additional things you need to do. So th those are the uh, different in terms of operations, right? So, uh, and also the configuration, networking, other aspects. And also you can set a limit in the in terms of, in, in, in virtualized environment, you can set a limit, like I want a VM of this resource limits and other things. But uh, in, uh, in hardware, uh, you need to have to configure a lot of things into so managing that is a little bit uh, tricky. So you need to have the right uh, tools. Any questions or we we'll proceed? Uh, so containers are good only for stateless applications, right? Um, yeah. So what happens to something like database application when you are the container? Yeah, it's a... So uh, yeah, it's meant for stateless applications. So many of our applications are stateless. So there are uh, uh, there are stateful applications also, but it may not be. Uh, I don't see any difference being like virtualized or bare metal in that case. Sorry, asking like how that will impact your addition of uh, going into VM and bare metal. Um, so what I'm asking is if the So, um, 
then the database has to reside outside of the container for persistence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily, okay. because you can use persistent key stores. Key stores also you can use, but it, which are persistent storage volumes. So that you can, you can reattach data to a, a, a data from a previous container. VMs in this case could give you one benefit, which mm -hmm. is you can use, if you're using something like vMotion, you can actually have, in persistent cases, you can have vMotion fail over to another host in the event of a, hyper, uh, of a hypervisor failure and not lose I would say that's probably not the target for most Kubernetes use cases. Mm, yeah, true. So yeah, you, you can mount the volumes in, uh, in the in the case of virtualized environment and then reuse it in uh, elsewhere. Yeah, there are storage differences also. Uh, as I said, like there are networking issues also, networking differences also between these two, and also storage has to be uh, handled differently when you do for bare metal. Okay, so yeah, so we continue on advantages of uh, bare metal as we discussed, like it's a, a high performance because direct uh, hardware integration and helps in, uh, especially in the network throughput, that's what we are looking for. And also the better uh, resource utilization. Uh, other, th other aspect is uh, faster cluster deployments because you are uh, really using the uh, direct uh, hardware. And uh, footprint, the, uh, the uh, footprint difference is there. Um, because if you if you uh, take the uh, VMs, you 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 take away that hyper you uh, have the hypervisor layer, which is going to cost uh, cost you some resource. But in terms of bare metal, you, you don't have that. There's a footprint advantage also. And the next is like uh, technological evolution. So what is happening in bare metal? Uh, so we saw that there are issues, pros and cons, and there are uh, challenges. So we will touch upon the some of the technological evolution. What is happening? to take care of uh, certain aspects of these issues. Uh, what is against the bare metal is like uh, security, uh, tenant isolation. So then we need to take care of certain uh, mitigation steps for it. Uh, <coughs> like I said, like if you have a, a very hard multi-tenancy requirement, it's better to go into a VM. But if you, if you don't, you can take care of uh, through mitigation, like you carefully um, have select the workloads what you want to be in the same uh, uh, bare metal machine. So the other aspect is uh, hardware management and provisioning, uh, uh, which is which is uh, which is extra additional um, steps you need to take care in terms of uh, bare metal uh, deployments. Yeah, about the we lightly touched upon that, like if you want to do a live update or anything, so it's yep, and also the HA kind of uh, things. Yeah, it is. It's you need to. You need. It's. It goes back uh, to the old uh, way of doing, right? Yeah, it, it is, you need to think about you know how many bare metals you need to have. Yes. You need to think about disaster recovery scenarios. Correct. Yeah. yeah, that's that's good point. Also, uh, you cannot uh, quickly bring up the uh, another bare metal like. Right, so you, you if you want to have you overload it, then you need to bring up a provision another bare metal, and then bring up bring up. It's not an easy task. At the same time, if you, you cannot keep a reserve bare metal for you, that's a that's a cost disadvantage. Right? Yeah, so that's why like you need to uh, evaluate based upon your application. Hardware failure is same in both cases. It is still the same. You know, in public cloud, if you have a hardware failure, they will give you another VM. Right? But both are uh, closer. Yeah, so we are talking about uh, like bare metal in on-prem or bare metal in uh, cloud. But in terms of uh, uh, issues, real hardware issues, you are right. Like it, it might impact uh, uh, both the cases. But uh, if you think of as a VM, right, a machine issue, then you can always spin up other. Yeah. But also you can set some other uh, uh, things like uh, affinity rules and others where you can we can carefully take care of that in, in terms of uh, VMs, not impacting your uh, workload. Okay, so 
what kind of use cases needs uh, payment and deployments, right? So the the main use case is about like any com compute intensive applications, right? Any compute intensive applications you want to take advantage of the resources you put through the payment. So other uh, use cases is on uh, artificial intelligence. So the GPUs and the other uh, other hardware acceler accelerators, right? So they don't they don't tend to mingle with the VM very well. So so that's the reason like you will be ending up uh, if you want to have uh, Kubernetes and then use some of the features of the Kubernetes to deploy your models like Kubeflow and others. It's better to uh, have it in a bare metal where you have the GPUs and the accelerators. That's a, one of the driving uh, use cases going forward. Uh, you will see and also maybe in a lot of uh, compute intensive like uh, say. Uh, Financial aspects and other things. So, so the other use case which we we are, uh, our company is working on is on the tel telco uh, workloads. Like, so our applications are like uh, uh, latency sensitive, and uh, it, it cannot tolerate the VM's uh, overload it brings in. And uh, the telco edge use cases which we are tar targeting is or like uh, AR, AR VR kind of use cases and uh, connected cars and and uh, other edge applications. So where the latency is uh, very important. So, uh, so, f so we have the network aspect is taken care through 5G and others, but also from the compute and uh, things, we wanted to have the uh, distributed cloud where we have the Kubernetes running at the uh, edge and then in a, in a bare metal and also in a smaller uh, hardware. So that's one of the use cases driving this uh, bare metal. Uh, I'm not very familiar the storage uh, story behind that, but generally we uh, use uh, uh, Ceph and uh, Cinder kind of storages, yeah. So we, we have the plugins, the CSI plugins, so you can use that and enable the different uh, storage as well your requirements. So also we have this uh, CNI plugins for networking aspects. So that, that we heavily use for to take care of uh, certain networking aspects in, in the bare metal. Yeah, this we already talked about. I just want to skip this like hard multi-tenancy. Is the, is the challenge on the LCM. So next uh, we will touch upon what are the options in, uh, in terms of uh, bare metal, like how we can do this, so what are the technology evolution happening to, to take care of certain issues we talked about. So some, uh, uh, so we, we have this uh, picture where it shows like we have the hardware and then the Linux kernel and then the container. So here we have the each uh, microservice inside the container 
and uh, it, it uses a common uh, Linux kernel, right? So this is the typical uh, container uh, deployment. So then, like we saw the benefits of uh, uh, VM. Uh, VM gives you a, a security boundary uh, for you, and also you have uh, ability to spin up, spin out. So there are uh, technology. Uh, uh, technologies which is uh, uh, coming up to to have a VM kind of benefits to bring in the VM kind of benefits uh, to the container world so that you can use containers in the in the bare metal. So that's the only kind of hindrance to use containers in the bare metal. So there are like people have already seen the advantage of VM. They want to have a certain kind of uh, those aspects into the uh, containers. So uh, we have uh, we have. Uh, Two, three different options which we'll touch upon. So here we have the uh, basic hardware and then the Linux kernel, and uh, we introduce a little bit of hardware virtualization, uh, and then it, it sees that as a separate uh, um, VM, and then you have a Linux kernel on top of it, and then you have the your uh, middleware and container running on top of it. So this way uh, you have you get the benefit of uh, uh, VM kind of encapsulation here. But at the same time, you are running it on a real hardware. You don't have the heavy uh, hypervisor layer here. So you have a, a very thin layer, which will virtualize for you. And then you run your containers on top of this. So so in this uh, space, there are like multiple technologies, uh, which we'll uh, touch upon. So the, the first one is uh, Kata containers. So, uh, what is Kata container? It's a standard lightweight virtual machines. So it, it's it's we, we clearly saw the benefits of VM. So we want to bring that to the containers. So Kata containers is uh, from the OpenStack Foundation. So it, it has the lightweight virtual machine. So you can run the containers inside that one. Uh, it gives you the workload uh, isolation and the security aspect which we discussed, right? So you you have your uh, uh, small micro VM kind of setup on top of the containers. So your uh, Kubernetes can schedule it and uh, orchestrate, those things are still good. And it's based out of, uh, based on uh, QMU uh, technology. And then, uh, so so we'll compare between other technologies what is available there. So it has a high uh, uh, IO and the network performance uh, in, in the Kata containers, but they don't focus on the spin up times. So the Kata containers works uh, with this, like a kubelet, and then you have a, like what you have for a Docker runtime. So Kata has a Kata runtime, and then which will connect to your uh, VM, uh, micro VM kind of setup, and then you have the containers or pod running inside. So this is from uh, OpenStack Foundation, and uh, it's heavily used when, when you want to go for the uh, containers in bare metal. So it gives you the security, security aspects and isolation for you. In the, any questions in this? What's that CRI mode? Uh, that's the container runtime run interface. Okay, so it's it, it's going to give you a, a small VM environment on top of the containers. So first of all, we saw that uh, in uh, in security aspect, VM has better security compared to bare metal. Why we said is like you put you uh, deploy your workloads or containers on in the virtual virtualized environment. A VM boundary is there. That's the security aspect we are talking. So does the performance go down a little now? No, the performance will be uh, better because we are running this in the bare metal. Okay. So in terms of so the in terms of VM, we have a heavy hypervisor, right? And then you have a each VM on top of it, and then you have containers inside. Uh, it gives you advantage of uh, security isolation, but since you have a heavy hypervisor below, the performance is low. Right, right. I'm just trying to understand. Is this like uh, in between? Yeah, it is in between VM and bare metal. Yeah, but so it is on the bare metal. Right? It is on the bare metal. Yeah. So it is like we saw uh, uh, initially we saw like the containers directly running on bare metal, right? There are some challenges. 
or the, the pros and cons. So we saw that security is an issue there. So how to take care of that? So we bring in this technology. You're right. So it's like between the between the bare metal container and bare metal VM, we have this uh, new technology which is micro VMs are coming in. So it gives you VMs advantage uh, and at the same time uh, bare metals performance. So it is a hybrid uh, between that. So what makes container A and container B share the biggest problem, but not container C? What makes container A? A and container A, container B is sharing the same, the CPC kit of the mixed kernel, right? Yeah. But whereas container C has a different kernel, it is, it's not C to C. Yeah, you can have a different version or different uh, distribution of kernel also. So it's like Docker. Yeah, it is like Docker. Okay. So it's 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 like another layer you are adding here. It's like a hypervisor or, or a, a super trimmed down hypervisor. You get the benefits of VM, but not actually. Not actually VM. You get the benefits of VM. Like you can quickly um, spin up and spin down. All the, quality. all the qualities of VMs are there, but it it it, it doesn't bring up a lot of uh, uh, overload into that. So that's the uh, difference. <clears throat> So there's, there's no initiative to add security to the container itself which is adding a layer. So that they can turn it on and off depending on whether you want to use the extra security or not. No, we are not, um, so uh, we are not saying that container, it, it doesn't have a security aspects into it, right? So it's container itself has a security aspect into it. What we are saying is outside of container scope, right? You have a, you can have a, a attack on the, uh, on the host machine. Uh, so that's that's where we are talking about. So content itself has on the security aspect. So this is still the same thing here. So that one thing, other thing we are talking about is multi-tenancy. So this is, so when, when uh, how we bring in multi-tenancy is like we run certain workloads in a, like two, three VMs, another set of workloads in other VMs. That's how we bring hard multi-tenancy today. So that aspect is not there in bare metal. So you add it through micro VM kind of uh, technology. Yeah, it's it's, it's a micro VM kind of technologies. Yeah, there are two, three. One is uh, Kata containers, <coughs> and uh, uh, there is a GYSER, and then uh, Amazon's Firecracker. So these are the three things which is developing now. So, so these are known to the um, telco or uh, AAML kind of the those kind of use cases, right? Where they heavily rely on uh, this kind of uh, technologies. But if you're purely talking about cloud. Generally, people don't worry about any of these things, right? It, it's just non-existent to, to the cloud world. Yeah. But I have a quick question. So can you not install Docker to get away from this challenge? Why do you have to go through this open stack and you know, Kata containers and all? Mm -hmm. Just curious. Then how you do the containers? You want to have microservices. So we do so Docker. Yeah, we, we do. Uh, Okay, so we do uh, uh, Docker because we want to have uh, the microservices and Kubernetes orchestration, right? That's why we do the Docker and the other things. Uh, so if, if you want to have a cloud native application, you need to have Docker uh, container as well. So, uh, and then the bare metal story also, it's not like you just run it on a bare metal as someone asked, like you can have a certain workloads on bare, bare metal and others you can run it on uh, on the on the VM server. So there is a there is still a hybrid thing. So you need to have that Kubernetes uh, and Docker there so that you can have that hybrid. So in your uh, so there are certain services in, in your app. There, there are certain services which needs high performance. You can run it in bare metal. You can schedule it in bare metal. So there are certain services you can still have it in the virtualized machine. So yeah. Which are the features is not available in micro VM, which is available in normal VM, you know? Because it's built on version of VM, so what do we use as a benefit? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I I don't know like feature to feature comparison, but uh, I just know that it, it, it's a just a, if you take an existing QEMU, right? It's just a very minimal hypervisor. Uh, so you may not be able to have a lot of uh, risk. Uh, you, could, you may not have ability to have a lot of uh, um, resource handling and other things. It's like a, it's like a developer tool.
kind of thing, right? But if you go for VMware, iPhone, etc., it's a full-fledged product by itself. So those are the things. It's all the virtualization layer only, like where you do the virtualization or how how simple the virtualization. So, so that uh, the there is like KVM, QEM, you all these things are like enable you that uh, virtualization. But VMware is like heavyweight where you have all other aspects involved in that. Yeah. So the Kata container is based off of uh, based on the QMU technology. So QMU gives you complete. Uh, 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 kernel level virtualization. Oh, so next is a uh, GVI So this is um, this is, they, this is also kind of a micro VM, but they they uh, this solves a different uh, use case where you want to have uh, uh, high start times for your uh, VMs, right? So then you go for GVI This is this is one of the project from uh, I guess Google. So they they use the uh, user space kernel. For the containers, and then they share the uh, kernel here. If you see, so it, they they make the host kernel and then have a strip down uh, system system calls for you. They just allow only limited system call to be made to the uh, kernel. So this is a different uh, aspect, different way of uh, doing things. But this solves a problem of like uh, when you want to have a kind of micro VM technology, you are not worried about. Uh, it's not to take care of security in a bigger aspect, but it's about uh, start times. So you want to have a better start times there. <clears throat> so this one is like a, a firecracker. Uh, so they introduced, I, Amazon AWS introduced this firecracker. They open source it uh, last year in their, uh, in the, in their uh, AWS conference, uh, which has, which has um, given a lot of attention to these technologies. So the Kata containers used to be there for a long time. Uh, but after the firecracker announcement, all this space has heated up a little bit. Like everybody is talking about uh, micro VM, what is the advantage of using? So what uh, uh, firecracker has done is like uh, the, it's based on top of uh, KVM. So they take a KVM level uh, virtualization, which is like um, uh, kernel space, uh, and then uh, they have this virtual machine management or VMM. So it's it's, it's a small cloud native. We have to, they, they have uh, rebuilt that uh, micro VM itself, whereas the Kata container just uses the existing technology of uh, QEMU. Here they have, like, uh, from the scratch, they have built for the cloud native and uh, using the KVM. Uh, so this this uh, particular firecracker takes care of both, like your uh, security isolation because you have the micro micro VM. And also, it gives you the performance because they have uh, they are using KVM and uh, they have uh, rebuilt the uh, from ground up of all the cloud native aspects. So this is my, micro VM and uh, uh, Firecracker. So this this technology is evolving still. So when we see the micro uh, like a Firecracker and uh, and the Kata containers, so these are the uh, technologies which we should adopt if you want to do the. Uh, containers on a bare metal, and which will give you the benefit of uh, performance benefits of the real hardware, and at the, at the same time it gives you container orchestration, uh, scaling out, and having a hybrid environment. All those aspects, and uh, and, the, and the security benefits also. So I can be fenced, so it's, not, it's on the side. Wow, all this is in fact the micro. So the, the next kind of calls go to the micro VM or it goes through. I see arrows on both sides. So. Yeah. Can you explain what that really means? 
Yeah. So uh, the, the the you have the basic uh, KVM is that is there on on top of the hardware, like then the Linux kernel, and then you have the KVM. And uh, what they have is a hardware emulation aspect. So they have uh, uh, that's the VMM part for them. They have, they have emulated the hardware, and then you have the micro. That's a micro VM is the actual uh, code by the AWS. So that goes to the uses the KVM. And also, and uh, it goes to the uh, emulation part for emulating that hardware. And containers sit on top of the micro yeah. The containers sit on top of the micro VM. So for you, uh, for for the sorry for the for the containers, the micro VM is like a host machine. So you can have containers on top of the micro VMs. Yeah, which is like a, as a, as your picture like it's as the CPU. It's like a VM for you, so you have the CPU memory and the networking aspect uh, taken care of. Okay, uh, so we saw the uh, different aspects and then we saw the uh, evolving technologies, right? So now there are like to, to, to deploy Kubernetes on the bare metal. Uh, how do you do that? So there are some deployment options uh, like deployment tools. One is like uh, metal uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so this is a kubectl based uh, tool, uh, which will enable you to install Kubernetes on bare metal. So, the, so that there are different installer tools. So Kubernetes itself doesn't provide that. So we have the uh, other tools to have installed Kubernetes on a bare metal, which is, and then we have uh, kubectl. It's an open source project under uh, CNCF. Uh, which is uh, based out of a set of Ansible scripts. So they they provide uh, installer for uh, different platforms, multiple platforms, and it includes a bare metal also. So then we have this uh, uh, packet, which is uh, like as we discussed, like uh, that today the cloud providers themselves they give you the bare metal service, but this packet is a very uh, bare metal cloud, so you, you just subscribe and then go and uh, reserve a bare metal machine for you itself. So if you want to do some bare metal deployments, uh, you can uh, generally do it on, on top of this for, for your own exercise or hands-on activities. So that's all I have for today. I just want to discuss these aspects of uh, bare metal. So it's not like deep dive, just want to give you more view what is happening and what, what is the different technologies are evolving. Yeah, 5G is here, that's a, <laughs> that's a message. So for 5G, the microservice is very much important and bare metal is very much important. That's why we are into this. Yeah. Any questions? How easy that micro VM be moved to another bare metal? Is it, you see it in the or is it depending on like the, the Linux kernel, let's say if it's different Linux kernel, can you move around? Uh, it, it, it could be moved around, but the, the, the I think the technology is not still evolved. Like the, as we discussed, like there is no like uh, there is we are not still thinking like we will move the some micro VM workload from one node to another physical node. He's still talking about one physical node at this aspect at this time. Yeah. What is the price difference between the bare metal versus the multi-tenancy using the VM? So, the, so you're asking yeah, about the price difference from the user point of view if we go for the bare metal versus the multi uh, I'm not very sure if you're asking about like the the pricing in the public clouds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I am to reserve the bare metal versus I say I'm fine with the multi tenancy if you give me that. Uh, or I, I get better performance, but at the same time I'm going to see the price difference. Yeah. So what's your experience about price difference? You know, if you take so uh, from my experience or like from the telco thing, right, we, we don't use any public cloud. So uh, we don't have any experience in using like um, AWS or Azure services. So it might, might just, just logically, I think bare metal might be uh, expensive yeah, service. How much do yeah, uh, factor of price, factor of price. Yeah, I don't know that information. Mm -hmm. What's the maintenance difference between like managing, you, I, I imagine you must have more um, hands-on type of activities that you would need for a bare metal versus a VM, <clears throat> like things that are kind of automated away from you in the VM side versus the, the bare metal or even the, the micro VM. Yeah, so that, 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 that we lightly touched upon. So the operations differences are huge. 
so there are a lot of things you need to take care when you do a bare metal uh, kind of a deployment. So the uh, the automation part of it is available in uh, VMs. So there are a lot of automation tools around VMs to manage, to spin up, to to uh, to do a. Uh, monitoring of the uh, performance, how how you are picking up, and all those things are available in terms of uh, VMs. But uh, in terms of uh, bare metal, the, it, it's it's hard to maintain, to, to upgrade, to install a patch, and uh, uh, any vulnerability checks. It's a little bit uh, tougher side. Yeah, that's what you need to really take that decision if you want to have a performance benefit or based on upon your use case or what type of workloads you want to maintain. So these all are had uh, had disadvantages, right? That's why we all moved to the virtualized environment. Now again, we are saying so. The other main aspect is about cost, right? So we are pay we paying too much for our. I don't know. I should not say that. We are paying a cost for uh, the uh, hypervisor layer, right? So that could be uh, avoided if you don't go to the bare metal. But you don't know. You might need to buy some other software to manage that uh, bare metal. So. It, but the cost is one of the aspect, yeah. And operational challenges are still exist. So the, the use case for going uh, bare metal, I mean, uh, with, with the uh, either security is for multi tenancy. If you don't have multi tenancy, is it okay to go with this container and none of this uh, add on? Yes. Like today, today you can take Kubernetes and then just deploy it in uh, bare metal. You do, if you are not worried about multi tenancy or anything, you just deploy it. Yeah. So security is only because of multi tenancy or something else also. Security is only uh, because of multi-tenancy, and also it's it's multi-tenancy, mainly it's multi-tenancy, and also you are re um, reducing the security, uh, the like attack surface. That's one aspect. But that's going to be well, yeah, that's yeah vulnerability and other things. Yeah, so that's going to be there anyway. Yeah, okay. but it's <laughs> each and every software you install it has its own. You know, you have to maintain. It, so, so maybe there's there's a even lighter version which just takes care of security alone and forget about multi tenancy so this is easy to manage. Yeah, yeah that's what like there are like it's nobody <laughs> settled down to the technology yet, right? So like as I said, like there is a technology just to take up take care of uh, spin up time. There is a technology just to take care of security, yeah. and there is something to worry about. If you are just worried about performance, you have other technology. Since it's open source world, you would pick and choose what is your uh, use case. Yeah. I think that's that's what um, the cloud providers want us to think, right? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do it. <laughs> or it's if you want to do it, it's still hard. <laughs> we have APIs. You can just what? come here and use the GPUs. We have APIs for you. But, but, but it is a trade-off because you, yeah. sp you spend a lot of money and manpower and resources to keep it up, to maintain it, to uprev between versions. I mean, you know, I mean, Kubernetes just in the last what three years has gone like like fourteen, uh, gone like ten minor revision releases. With like major security fixes and yeah. bug enhancements and things like that, so just upgrading from version to version can become very time-consuming. I I, I, I I agree that, and also in the in case of bare metal, you need to consider that, yeah. right? You you don't have an option for uh, like a high availability or anything. If you want to go and upgrade your Kubernetes version on a bare metal every quarter, then it's it's not going to work. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, thank so, you. And moreover, awesome. you have to keep resources for your peak load also. Yeah. So like it's scaling, it's scaling. Well, yeah, like with yeah. VMs, you can do weird things. Although I think containers kind of, you kind of don't want to do this, but like you can do things like over provision and let the VM layer then <clears throat> then handle the over provision, give it, give certain workloads higher priority in other workloads. You can also do that with Kubernetes. Kubernetes has its own scheduling, so you can give those CPUs. But I, uh, but depending on your load, that may not always work. I mean, again, it, it kind of depends. So 
makes a valid point. So he, he gives a compromise. The security risk is very negligible. Can uh, be assumed that way or no? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> look at internal attacks and external attacks. So both, both are. So Anything like, is connected is you cannot say security is <laughs> not. So, so like a, like a good example of that would be let's say you have a, a pod uh, or a group of services that run on one host and there are eight or ten pods or eight or ten containers all talking to each other. You can isolate them in a VM with no network access. And only the only the ingress and outgress can see what's going on on those hosts. If you have a bare metal with ten thousand pots running up because of the size of the VM, you need that many to make use of the hardware. Now that's much. That's where it goes. It goes back to this talk about the wider attack space. Now if someone gets in, it's not just one use case or another use case that you're you're getting access to. You get access to the entire cluster of data if you somehow break into that system. Yeah, you don't have multi-tenancy, but within the organization, there's finance department, there's HR department, they might have applications running, which kind of becomes multi-tenancy for your organization, I guess, in some ways. I'm saying attack surface inside, because you're all yeah. the, on behind the, behind the, behind the very thick firewall, it's an improvise. Yeah. So the attack surface is much smaller than the public cloud. Yeah. That but still internal attacks. Since then, yeah. since then, the attack is going to be there, no matter what. That's risky, though. Yeah. No, no, but when we say on-prem, it's not like uh, it's, it's used only in, in inside organization, right? When we say on-prem, on-prem applications, these are the applications which are used by outside users, but we are just hosting in on-prem, so that that still the, the 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 connection goes to the outside world. But you're right, there are the firewall things and others, but still the connection goes to the outside. It's not like internal users for the organization. Yeah, so um, we, we, are, we are looking at uh, bare metal and uh, we, we, so as I said, like there are invest, investments already made in the virtualization world, like, like an open stack. So, so right now our solutions are like, it's like a lot of hybrid. So we have, um, we need to reuse the uh, open stack assets and then deploy containers on top of that. So those, are, those aspects are there and then uh, in near future, we are looking for bare metal. So bare metal uh, are on using something like Kata containers. So Kata containers is part of OpenStack Foundation. So we are working with them. So that's that's a kind of tool tool of choice for us. So when you said bare metal, are you planning to have a data center, or are you trying to get bare metal from one of our cloud providers? So. Uh, so uh, just to give you a better, it's like telco use case. Like if you take uh, any operator, right? Like t or at and they have their own uh, data centers. So the applications other vendors, telco vendors provide. So they will run it on that uh, particular data center inside that organization. Yeah, they have the payment. And then the risk is like they, they get, applicate. why we talk about multi-tenancy, like they get application from different vendors. So there are like, uh, we call network functions to, to take care of your, uh, uh, call routing and others, right? So the one function come from can come from uh, network function can come from Ericsson. So the other one, one come from uh, Nokia. So what they do is like they run both of them in the same data center. So that's why we talk about uh, multi tenancy with multi vendors. So yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot of regulatory stuff. That's that's the main reason why we are looking into bare metal uh, for the telcos, right? We cannot host the uh, uh, telco applications in the in the public cloud, so even though there are cost benefits and others. There are like regu regulatory limitations which will force them to use only their own data center. So in a way, they are the public cloud. I mean, cloud yeah, <laughs> the, the route is different. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good conversation. Thanks, Ampat.
that was pretty good overview of bare metals and containers of bare metals. Uh, so we have this room for another couple of hours actually <laughs> because we don't have a second speaker. So feel free to ask him more questions that you didn't ask when he was presenting and network. Also, uh, one of our attendees wanted to find out uh, by show of hands how many people over here would be interested in joining a group to do Kubernetes certification? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's a decent size. Uh, so, what I'll do is I will post it uh, as a discussion on the meetup site so that we can create a Google group or something to get started and then we can use this meeting as a place where those people can come early or stay back late and discuss the certification things. Thank you very much.